Hi, I'm Homa Sabet Tavangar. I'm the author of Growing Up Global, Raising Children to Be at Home in the World, and more recently of the Global Education Toolkit for Elementary Learners. Um, I got into this field of global education and global citizenship a little over 10 years ago. I had been working almost 20 years in um, global competitiveness, business development, uh, with hundreds of small and mid-sized American companies, many manufacturers. I live in Philadelphia and many that were in the Philadelphia area worried that the global competition was going to destroy them. And it was destroying them. Um, so I would get involved with companies and learn about what they were doing and also do a lot of coaching for their executives, helping them to get ready for their first international business trip, helping them understand how their company could be more competitive. And um, just around after September 11th, 2001, I uh, had two children at the time and I had a chance to travel with some of these companies to China. And I learned a lot about business there as well as about how they were preparing their own children for the global economy, for their new role as a leader in the, in the global economy. And it was very impressive. I mean, we know the statistics that there are more Chinese people studying English than there are English speakers in all of North America. So things like that are very impressive, but more down to the level of families and schools um, seeing the preparation for their children in this more global economy, in this new era, was very impressive. And I came back from that trip to find out that we were expecting our third child. And then I really got to thinking about how we in the United States are preparing our kids for this changing world. And so I started to look for resources and turn my attention to what was happening in education and what was out there that as a parent I could turn to. And frankly, I didn't find those resources in an easy to access place. And so I set out to write a book on my quest in a lot of ways and the resources that I found. And that's how Growing Up Global came to be. And since the time it was published, which was late 2009, um, it's sort of taken on a life of its own. And my attention has really turned to education, visiting many schools, learning from teachers around the world, learning about the technologies that are available, about the ways to not just be plugged in, but to be truly connected. And so my interest is really in the sort of humanizing aspect of globalization and global citizenship, how we can truly connect um, with this opening of borders. And I think that is, it's just a topic that continues to fascinate me. Um, it doesn't get old. I don't get tired of it. I look at it every day for 10 years and I learn something new every day. Um, one of the topics that's really at the core of my message and of growing up global has to do with global citizenship. And I found um, in the book, I talk about my experience spending a little bit of time in the Gambia, West Africa with my three daughters. I have three daughters now. Um, and how I looked at the world through their lens and their lens of making friends. And I was fascinated to see how natural and warm and welcoming the experience of friend making was for them in an environment that was so completely different from what they'd experienced in the sort of American suburb that they grew up in their whole life. And I found a quotation, be a friend to the whole human race. And that sort of clicked for me because I'd been thinking about how am I going to talk about global citizenship with so many of my American friends and neighbors that if they see this topic come up on the TV, they would just change the channel. They're not interested. What would keep them on that channel? What would keep them interested in global citizenship? And so friendship turns out to be sort of the universal idea. 
And since writing Growing Up Global, I have spoken with hundreds of um, schools and parent organizations and nonprofit groups and even corporations where I ask um, whoever is in the audience. So from CEOs to kindergartners and teachers and parents and people on every coast and every belief system, every type of background you can imagine, I ask, what do you, how do you define a good friend? And they always come back with the same answer. And it even includes, it, even often it's in the same order that the words are given. So usually it's things like trustworthy, loyal, kind, respectful, helpful, non-judgmental, they've got my back. Um, and then about word number eight, nine is we have fun together. We laugh. And so if you think about those qualities of a good friend and you sort of universalize it, you put it on a bigger scale, being a friend to the whole human race, that is pretty much what it means to be a global citizen. And um, I'm doing some work with the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting right now, which has a fabulous global education program um, taking sort of big issues and untold stories by some of the best journalists in the world into classrooms. And even on that scale, when we work with teachers, I'm introducing this idea. If you start by looking at the world through the eyes of a good friend, a friend to the whole human race, then you look at issues of resource use and the treatment of women or literacy or technology or borders, all these big issues. And you um, think about those people on the other side as your friend, you start to develop a relationship. The issues get personal and you start to care a lot more. So I think that's such an important, simple way to just begin this study of global citizenship. Um, one of the issues that I encourage with teachers as well as with parents and school administrators, um, anybody, is to start to experience the world wherever you are. You don't need a passport. You don't need a lot of money to get started with this process of being a global citizen, growing up global. And the way to sort of approach that is to start with what you love. So I really want to get away from the idea that this is another burden on you, that this is one more requirement because there's already so much. But natural interests, whether it's sports or food or movies or literature, whatever it might be, or other people or technology, can be your entry point to starting to experience the world. So whether it's, I have a whole lot of resources in the book, like too many to get listed here, but if you are a coach or if you have a big sports culture at your school, you can start to look at the uh, stars of soccer in the countries that you want to study. You can look at websites like FIFA.com. You can watch movies that show um, athletes from other countries or great stories of sports from around the world. There are wonderful books. There are wonderful sort of videos and music videos and websites. And I really think it's sort of like this journey that once you get started, then the floodgates open and you find more and more great resources to tap into. Maybe you are starting a blog in your class and you're getting comments from other people around the world. Or maybe nobody's commenting and you, set, you get on Twitter and you start to tweet out special interest words that might attract people to come to your blog. And it's just the beginning of a journey. Um, I always say start with what you love and do one thing. So don't feel overwhelmed that you have to take on the whole wide world at one step, but you do one thing. And if your school has 50 people embracing this idea, that's 50 new initiatives. So it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. Take one simple step. It could be a video that you love, 
It could be the book that you're reading for your own pleasure. Um, but that will start to kind of get your own creativity going to experience the world with greater depth and quality with each step that you take.